Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, well, what a year it has been. Uh, a landmark one for us in UKIP. Um, but what about Britain? And as culture spokesman for the party, uh, it is British culture that concerns me most. Just two years ago, we were enjoying a summer full of celebration and British pride with the Queen's Jubilee and the London Olympics, and there were Union Jacks everywhere. And yet, barely two weeks ago, our very sense of ourselves as a nation, as a united kingdom, was brought to the brink. But also this year, our sense of who we are, our values, has suffered other assaults. We've been faced with the horrific images of unspeakable atrocities committed abroad by people from this country who have traveled there to do just that. I'm sure that, like me, you flinched every time you've heard these people referred to by the media as British citizens. Well, we've also seen, with the so-called Trojan plot, a serious attempt to infiltrate our education system by extremists intent on imposing an ideology hostile to our values and our way of life. And, of course, as we've heard this morning in Rotherham, we've seen child abuse on a massive scale ignored and seemingly tolerated for years. In the face of all of these things, it's surely no wonder that there is such anger, in fact, I would say such rage, amongst so many people in our country. They're asking, and quite rightly, how can this happen in Britain? What is happening to my country? Well, let's turn to Scotland first. The political class's inability to make the case for what is the most successful union in modern history was rooted in its embarrassment and often its sheer ignorance of that history. And if you doubt this, I'd ask you, do you recall any official celebrations for the 300th anniversary of the union in 2007? There were none. How could the political class appeal to a collective sense of Britishness when decade after decade it seems to have done its very best to undermine it? The verdict, <laughs> the verdict should be a wake-up call to all of us who, having constantly and complacently those people who have chipped away at the very notion of British nationhood, almost let it slip away entirely. Now, last weekend, in the aftermath of that referendum, a poll was published in the Mail which asked people how a sense of British pride could now be best promoted. Well, it will come to no surprise to us in UKIP, as a grassroots movement, that many people quoted the need to teach our children about British heroes, such as Churchill, and that our flag should be flown far more often and that there should be symbolic celebrations such as a national holiday celebrating Britishness. But by far the biggest response was that people were asked and they said that people from ethnic minorities should be encouraged to support British values. This showed again that the public has a far greater wisdom and a far greater grip on events than those who presume to govern us. And I'd say that it shows too something which we in UKIP know full well, that far from being chauvinistic or racist, the British people are welcoming to all of those who want to be a part of our way of life, for wherever they are from, and that you can be part of Britain if you truly want to share our values, our traditions, and indeed our laws. Of course, multiculturalism, the doctrine which has been enforced with an almost religious fervour over the past four decades, runs absolutely counter to such genuine inclusiveness. It has emphasised separateness, it has vehemently disallowed criticism, it has treated all practices and traditions, however they might offend our values and laws, as being of equal standing. It has been championed most fiercely by those who have little interest in preserving British identity or who are indeed hostile to the very idea of it. 
Far from getting people to mix, multiculturalism has instead, I would say, produced in parts of our country what can only be described as series of monocultural islands. And, you know, ladies and gentlemen, we should remember this. Nobody voted for multiculturalism. Instead, we are living with the results of it. Now, it's certainly true that recently the political establishment has been backing away from the whole idea of it. But recent developments have shown how urgently we need to confront the situation we find ourselves in. Indeed, it was with surprising frankness that the Times, of all people, in a leading article commenting on the spectre of British jihadists, said, quote, for fear of upsetting what is seen as a delicate multicultural balance, Britain has allowed itself to become an exporter of terror. Now, that is the Times. Elsewhere, there have been other signs, a growing realization, where this obsession with multiculturalism has led us. The findings which emerged from the Trojan horse case led the government to start belatedly talking of the need to actively promote British values in our schools, presumably as merely uh, opposed to merely acknowledging them uh, as one set amongst many others. Indeed, in London as well, the mayor of a borough there, Newham, sought to promote integration by slashing the majority of funding for translation services. And indeed, in Bolton Council, Voters were encouraged to fly the flag, and indeed there was the encouragement of the singing of the national anthem in schools in an attempt to promote a kind of sense of shared patriotism in the young. Now, such instances as these show that it is we in UKIP who are setting the agenda, and indeed we are ahead of the curve. They're very encouraging signs, but a massive amount still needs to be done if we are to halt cultural fragmentation in our country after years of ideologically inspired policy. And unlike the old parties, the supercilious Tories and the moral vacuum, which is now the Labour Party, we in UKIP are not afraid to do this. So to this end, I've put together a discussion document called Beyond Multiculturalism Towards a United Future. Here it is. Uh, it's available outside of the shop. I do hope that you can buy it and read it. Um, it's not a policy document, it is a discussion document. The contributors are drawn from all parts of our party, from MEP to constituency activists, from the National Deputy Chairman to PPC. Their suggestions and their observations are not policy points as yet, but it's my hope they introduce a much needed fresh air into an issue which has been hedged around with fear, confusion and inhibition. So much of it comes down to common sense. But before we go any further, we must make it clear, again, what is meant by this term multiculturalism. It is emphatically not about people of different ethnicities and religions living together. As I said earlier, Britain has always welcomed people of all cultures and creeds, and UKIP has always been absolutely clear that we welcome anyone who wishes to be part of Britain, its values and traditions. Indeed, the diversity within our own ranks could be amply seen at the hugely successful public meeting the party held in Westminster just before the May elections. Multi-ethnicity is one thing. It is not multiculturalism. You can have a highly successful multi-ethnic society, a harmonious one, so long as it is united by an overarching sense of British values and British culture. This is, I would suggest, the only way in which a nation can be truly united. And it is vital if people are to be successfully assimilated into that society. In these essays, there are eight of them, the importance of a common language comes through loud and clear. Without that, we are not a cohesive society. And it's astonishing that the existence of multiple languages within our schools is treated as progressive and something to be celebrated when common sense tells you that that's the sort of thing that leads to social division. Now, last year, you might remember, Nigel was attacked by the media establishment 
when he spoke of a train journey from London uh, without hearing uh, the English language spoken once. Um, but what he said will strike a chord with millions of people. I'm afraid it's no ifs, no buts. But those who want to be part of Britain must speak our language. In, uh, in one of the essays, our Deputy Chairman, Suzanne Evans, describes particularly how it is women from some minorities who perhaps had the most to lose from multiculturalism. Forced marriages, honour killings, endemic inequality. Women in ethnic minorities have been denied the rights of other British women in the name of multiculturalism. The practice of FGM, female genital mutilation, for example, which with mass immigration has increased hugely in the UK, has resulted in not one single successful prosecution, despite it being against the law for 30 years. Now, a terrible misplaced cultural sensitivity, coupled with the fear of being called racist, has led directly to this crime against women and girls going unpunished. <laughs> Similarly, the horrific child abuse in Rotherham was allowed to continue for years for the same reasons. Dennis McShane, the former Labour MP for Rotherham, admitted that, as he put it, as a Guardian reading Liberal lefty, he had not adequately confronted it. He said, I think there was a culture of not wanting to rock the multicultural community boat, if you put it like that. So there you have it from the horse's mouth. To use one of the left's cliches against them, such thinking must have no place in modern Britain. <laughs> what also comes through loud and clear in, in Beyond Multiculturalism, the booklet, is that we must celebrate our history. A history is a mutual story, you know? It is a past, a present, and a future. We must celebrate it, and we must pass it on in our educational system. We must uphold to the laws of the UK and defend the fundamental principle of freedom of speech which underlies our whole democracy. There really is... There really is no need for the Law Society to publish advice on the drafting of Sharia wills. There must be one law for all. But the fact is, you know, that we in UKIP know this, but the British people know this. Next year, we have the perfect opportunity to illustrate and celebrate our belief in those values, in our history, in our legal system, and in our freedom of speech, with the 800th anniversary of the signing of the Magna Carta, a document which goes to the very root of who we are and what we are. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe we're facing now cultural questions every bit as urgent and defining as the great economic battles of the 70s and 80s. We have to have confidence in ourselves if indeed we are to promote a unifying British culture. Certainly that culture can be one that is open to anyone who wishes to identify with us and our values. But our own belief in the greatness of that tradition and the uniqueness of that culture is vital. It, it is one that we in UKIP will not shy away from expressing loud and clear. So I think the time has come and I will end on a set of lines which probably are very familiar to many of you by G.K. Chesterton and uh, like all the best lines they're worth repeating. We hear men speaking for us of new laws, strong and sweet. Yet it is there no man speaketh as we speak in the street. But we are the people of England, and we have not spoken yet. Ladies and gentlemen, we're speaking now. We're speaking now. Thank you.